Shreddy Nut, episode 131. I'll give you a short answer and then a long answer. My entry is where most people stop losses are. The market's going to do something. Your job is not to fight it. The market never, ever runs away. It's always there. That personal diary of trading will make you a much better trader than... I could be right about the direction, but wrong about the trade. Don't focus on the monetary side. Trying to make too much money on a trade is what I have seen killed every trader. Your losses offer you some of the greatest insight you can find into your mistakes. Relax. Learn the process. Candlestick pattern trading is a freaking trap. Don't be in a rush to become a millionaire. Let the market tell you what the market wants to tell you. This podcast is not financial, trading, or investing advice of any kind. What's up, traders? Welcome to another installment of the Trading Nut Podcast. I'm your host, Cam Hawkins, and today we've got Karen Davis on the show. Now, Karen was recommended by Pips of Persia, who's been on the show before. And uh, Karen's a Forex and a crypto trader. And I see why Pips of Persia Medi recommended this guy, because he does actually have a very good and simple way of explaining not just what he does and how he trades in his journey from struggling with failure uh, at things like school and stuff, to becoming successful in a in a in a trading sense and also accepting that failure. So you're gonna find out more about that in the show. Uh, after the show we did shoot a video. You've got to go and check that out because Karen also enters where you guys are putting your stops. Okay, so if you want to see what that looks like, then definitely check out the video we put up on YouTube afterwards. Whilst you're there, do remember we have got the Crypto Nut series. So if you want to dive deeper into crypto, then go and check that out. We've got Nathan Sage up there. We've got uh, Andy Peters who are dropping value bombs in when it comes to crypto. And it's one of these things you want to see really quickly when they go out so that you can pick up the nuggets of where these things might be reacting. So it's really intuitive stuff here, guys, over on the Trading Nut YouTube channel only at the moment. Also, whilst you're there, you may as well check out the Scalper vs. Scalper uh, show that I shot last week where it was a bit of a disaster. I'll be honest, it was a bit of a disaster. We had uh, one trader pull out on the day, so I had to step in and compete against the reigning champ of Trader vs. Trader, uh, Dovi FX, in a a one-and-a-half-hour live market scalping challenge. Now, if you do want to see how that played out, then it's over there on Trading Nut. Go and check out the challenges page on Trading Nut. You'll see the full replay there of me going up against Dovi the champ in a a one-and-a-half-hour scalping challenge. So if you want to see how I trade, that's some uh, some insight into how I I would approach scalping. Not that I do any scalping at all, but that's how I would have approached it. And uh, you'll you'll learn a thing or two there, I'm sure. Um, Last but not least, we did use, as part of that show, we used a bit of software that, uh, that entered the trades for us. So in fact, it placed a lot of the trades that sometimes it entered the trades. Now, this software was something I built as part of my Robot Builders Club. Guys, it just shows you how easy it is to build some build whatever you want to do, whatever you dream up or whatever tool you can think of with the skills that you'll learn that I teach you in my Robot Builders Club. Uh, if it's a fully automated thing or a semi-automated thing with buttons on the charts like what I've got with Scalper vs. Scalper, it's all doable over there on uh, Trading Art. I teach you how to do it with my strategies. I've been, I checked it out. I've been doing this for seven years, building these robots for seven years. So go and check that out over there. Uh, it's under the Robots tab. There's a free training as well. So if you want to do the free training first, I do recommend that. Um, and if you do want to come on board, let me know and I'll sort out a way for you uh, guys to come on board. Now, the doors aren't going to be open forever on Robot Builders Club. They are, in fact, going to be closing soon. So what I recommend is if you're thinking about it, now's the time to act. All right, folks, enough from me. Remember, we shot a video with Kieran after this. Got to go and check it out. But for now, let's get on with this amazing interview. Hey, folks, my sponsors, City Traders Imperium, have just launched some amazing changes to their funded trader program you got to check out. You can now skip the whole evaluation, trade gold, as well as Forex. Plus, they've increased the drawdown you're allowed in both the evaluation and when funded. With C2A, it's even faster and easier to reach up to $4 million in funding with a 50 to 70% profit share. Click the link in the description to find out what else has changed. All right, folks, here we are on Trading Up. We've got Karen Davis, the master of coin in the house, recommended on the sh- uh, recommended by uh, Mehdi, who is Pips of Persia. So uh, and I think you were one of two people that he recommended I get on. So welcome to the show, Karen. Hey, thank you, man. I appreciate you having me. I'm excited to be here. Well, look, I'm excited to do the show. So um, cr- just for you guys listening, so uh, Karen is a crypto and a Forex trader. 
so he's going to have, the, I suppose, two sides of the coin, excuse the pun, uh, to, to share with us today. <laughs> so, Kieran, do you want to start off by talking, talking us through how you got into trading? Okay, cool. So I really believe that trading actually found me. Um, it's funny because you know prior to trading, prior to getting involved with this industry, if I'm going to be very honest with you, I was kind of going down the wrong path, doing some of the wrong things. Um, I'm not going to get into that. And basically, one of my friends actually hit me up and told me, "Hey, you know, there's this thing called trading. You can make money from your phone." I was like, "Well, that sounds dodgy. <laughs> that sounds illegal." Um, long story short, we met up. I mean, he showed me he showed me about just the industry. He really opened my eyes to it. Um, so I started looking online. Um, didn't really go too well. And then that's when I got invited down to an event and, I, and everything got broken up, broken down to me properly, got introduced to a proper educational platform. Um, and from there, the rest is just history. Cool. It, and so, I mean, the, the rest is just history, I suppose, is what we want to dive into here in terms of hmm. the struggles and stuff that you would have gone through in those early days to, to get to the point where you are now. I mean, do you, do you want to break those down? Oh, oh, yeah, man. I'd say the biggest struggle that I had to face was not so the skill set, was more so the emotional aspect, was more so the personal development aspect of it. Because I found that I was someone who was very rebellious naturally. So, you know, creating trading rules, creating a disciplined trading plan was not something that was part of my nature, you know, especially in you know, the schooling system that I was brought up with, you know, and that, that, you know, typical nine to five mentality, you've got a guarantee um, compared to in trading, it's more entrepreneurship, right? You've got to embrace the risk. So for myself, you know, naturally losing trades, I didn't know how to lose. You know, I was programmed to think my entire life, if you lose and you fail, you know, you're, you're bad. You're not, you, it's, it's bad to fail, you know, for example, in school, you know, if I failed a test or something, um, then, I, you know, you'd get punished, you'd get disciplined. But I learned now in trading that matter of fact, you can actually lose a lot more than you win and still be very, very profitable once you've got the right risk management. So for me, it was more so the emotional aspect of it rather than the technicals. You know, I really believe that trading is literally 10% skill set and 90% mentality because I don't think we even trade the markets. I really believe we trade our belief system about the market. And when I started to understand that, that was when everything started to change. That was when I noticed my equity curve rise, let's say. <laughs> so so what, were the, what were some of the sort of horror stories when you first started out? Oh, okay, well, the first... <laughs> Okay, so the first mistake I made was not going on a demo account. So the first time I got exposed to trading, I was so excited and I was really overwhelmed by just the amount of money you can make. You know, there's a lot of conflict of interest in this industry. You know, a lot of brokers, broker affiliation, where people want you to obviously trade frequently and trade a lot. So when I first come into this, I didn't understand any sort of risk management. And again, this is before I met Medi, etc., and the first trade I literally placed, I remember the first trade I grew my account by 50%. Again, this was no risk management, no strategy, just randomly. And then after that, the account was gone within another trade. And that was all in the space of about 10 minutes. Oh, <laughs> and then seriously? From there, yeah. Uh, so you can only imagine the, the emotional <laughs> cycle I was going through. Um, but and then from there, it was just a very slow and, you know, grind, steady grind upwards. Hey, just jumping in here with a message from my sponsor, Sage Strategies. Do you want to trade gold and crypto like the institutions? Well, now you can, and it's free for 14 days with Sage Strategies, fully automated trading strategies. Check out their live track records for 25 unique strategies, plus they'll host everything for you, which is perfect for beginners and advanced traders or investors. Simply sign up for their 14-day free trial at sagestrategies.io and experience it for yourself. And, and what were some of those sort of turning points in there? You, you talked about this education. I mean, what, what did that give you from i suppose a technical point of view yeah so it was more so having a structure man because i was trying to look on you know on different you know just every bit of resource i could get my hands on and i was i had a very scattered consciousness you could think of it there were so many different things i was trying to pick together and because i didn't have like a structured strategy i didn't have a mentor i didn't have that one-on-one guidance i was just trying to get to somewhere i've never been which is <laughs> really impossible. So once I actually got that mentor and actually found someone who had the results I wanted, it was just a lot easier to have someone not only to confide in, but to give me that guidance that I needed. Um, and a lot of the breakthroughs I had probably come from a lot of self-reflection as well. Um, but the technical analysis as well, having that full-on structure to make sure that I've got the full, um, let's say the full puzzle compared to just some of it. And do you want to, do you want to I suppose, give us a, a view on the technical analysis in terms of what what it is that you're looking at on a tr- price chart which other people might not be doing or they might be doing something different 
Yeah, so <laughs> to keep it, very, I'll give you a short answer and then a long answer. My entry is where most people's stop losses are. You know, I, if we look at the industry and we look at the actual facts for a second, you know, we understand that 90%, 95% of traders lose money. So what I've kind of done and what my mentors have done as well, because you know, I don't take credit for anything I've, I've achieved. It's all my mentors. It's all God as well. Um, but basically in, in this industry, right, most people fail. So what I've kind of taken the approach of and what my mentors have taught me is to observe the masses and do the opposite. So most most way that people trade, for example, with double top patterns, um, support and resistance, you know, most people put their stop losses, you know, just below the, the support level, just above the resistance level. And we wait for those areas of what we call liquidity to get captured. And then once that's been captured, well, we now know that there's a bigger player behind that because the only people that have, well, let's be real, the only people that have the motivation to buy, at a, sorry, to buy at a resistance level would be an institution, right? Most people are taught to sell off resistance. So the only people in the world that would have an intention or even a motivation and even the means to make that happen would be the sm- would be obviously the institution. So we're basically a piggybacking on the footprints that they live in the market. Ah, okay, okay, okay. And um, so you talked about a mentor. I mean, how did you how did you find your mentor? Because a lot of people out there listening are like thinking, well, if I'm going to get a mentor, how do I find a mentor? So firstly, I believe as well, when the student is ready, the teacher will appear. So I actually got invited to an event. Um, and that's when I saw um, someone on stage um, called you know, Pips of Persia, Mehdi, shout out to him. I'm super grateful for everything he's done for me. Um, we didn't have that much of a close relationship because I didn't think I was that ready at the time. Um, I was a little bit immature in my own person, if I'm going to be honest with you. Um, and then a lot of things started to happen in my life, which kind of got me to a point of almost desperation where I ended up sending him a lot of, basically just contacting him a lot on social media. Um, he basically just called me. Um, he met up with me in his office and then just bit, pretty much just took me under his wing. Um, and I think that was at the point once I developed myself enough to get to the point where I could have a mentor. Because before that, I had no coachability. You know, if my ment- if someone would tell me to jump, I'd sit down. But now if Mehdi or my other mentors tell me to jump, I'm going to jump without questioning. So the biggest, oh, um, yeah. sorry, yeah, the biggest thing I would say to get a mentor is to make sure you're ready and you're coachable. Because once you've got that coachability and you're ready to actually receive, I believe the universe will provide for you. Yeah, I've, I, I have to agree with that, actually. I think it's so right in terms of when you're ready, which is the difficult thing to work out or to even even have to work it you shouldn't have to work it out you're gonna it's you're gonna be told when you're ready that's the that's the shame of it right is you can't get yourself ready enough but Mm. it is so right in terms of when you're ready the the mentor or master will appear when the student's ready and the question is i suppose you could look deep as you mentioned before look deep into yourself and go well what is what does i need to do to be ready what could i strip away or what should i stop doing or start doing to get me more in a position to show that like when this mentor appears i'm i'm actually in a better position and, and i'm in the position to learn so i think that's probably that would be my takeaway what's your view on like how does somebody get ready to to, to be <laughs> to find that mentor that's going to help them cross that barrier yeah. So the first thing I would say is get clear on exactly what you want. Firstly, get know exactly what you want in terms of all down to the details. You know, a lot of people come into trading just for the money, which again, it's fine. You know, you, people can do that, but know exactly what you want. But more importantly, know why you want that. Okay. You want, for example, seven figures, eight figures, whatever it may be. Why do you want that? You know, what will actually have in a seven figure trading account, eight figure trading account, what would that do for you? How is that going to help you? And having, a, I believe, having a bigger purpose. Because one reason why I got into trading, except from just obviously, you know, the, the money and the freedom, was to help out my family. If I'm going to be honest with you, I haven't really come from a family of money uh, whatsoever. So it was really just to help out my mom, especially my mom and my dad. Um, so having that bigger purpose and that bigger reason why that was external to myself, I feel like that kind of set the tone. And for again for the universe to provide because it was bigger than just me. And and when when things really started to click, I mean, what what did it happen all of a sudden, or or was it over a series of weeks or months, or how did it how did it eventuate? Yeah. So okay. So it got to a point where if I'm going to be very um very honest, I was kind of getting in trouble with the law. Um, and then from there, that's when things started to kind of happen step by step. I'm a big believer in something called law of attraction. When you know you're putting out the right energy you're going to attract the right energy. Because I, I believe you don't attract what you want, you're going to attract what you are. So for me, it started happening in small stages and small steps. 
and it was kind of like the universe was almost testing me to see how ready I was. Let's say, for example, it introduced me to the event. It said, okay, let's see how bad you want it. Let's see if you're going to travel to the event. Okay, so I traveled to the event. From there, obviously, it put you know Medi in my life. And then from there, it was like, okay, are you going to be receptive to him? Are you going to be receptive to his mentorship? Are you going to be receptive to his guidance? And it was more of a step-by-step process. You know, I think a lot of people think that they're just going to have one breakthrough, one day it's all going to click, and they're going to be a seven-figure trader. But it's not like that. I, I believe that the process is a lot more important. Um, and it was more so of a, of a small, like small breakthroughs after breakthroughs after breakthroughs that collectively compounded together. And was there a time that you sort of looked back on, on the journey and thought, and, and at, at that point in time, you're like, damn, man, I'm actually doing this to a point where I can now, I don't know, either like give some money to your family or shout them something. Or, or, or was there any point like that where you where you knew that like this is this is what I'm doing now. This is the main thing. Oh, yeah, of course. Of course. And you know, once you hit that certain amount um, in your account, well, you know, let's say when you were starting to withdraw, it's not really making a, a big dent in your account because you can just make it back. Once obviously that point happened, it was like, okay, cool. I'm so glad that I started this and stuck to it because again, it, it, the journey can be very dis, dis, you know, discouraging, you know, especially when you're new um, and you're you know, blowing accounts after accounts after accounts. I feel like it was once that first withdrawal hit, that was when it was like, wait, this is real. And I would really recommend anyone, even if they've got a smaller account, right? Even if you make 10%, right? In, and again, whatever percent, like time period that is in, have that withdrawal, let it hit your bank account. And then once it hits your bank and you actually, and go and treat yourself, right? Even if you, even if you buy just something small, right? You pay for dinner. Let's say you've got a small account, just pay for dinner. Um, do something like that. And then you can actually materialize it because once your subconscious mind gets to experience it, you're, I believe that was the biggest breakthrough. Having that withdrawal, getting to actually experience it. Um, and then from there, it, it was, that was like, I guess the, you know, the day where it was like, okay, cool. This is actually real. Because, you know, you can, even if you've got a live account, right, you can see profits, 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 but it's not your money until it hits your bank. And what about that day when you made that first, first withdrawal? I mean, what, what did you, what did you do with it, the, the, the money? <laughs> if I'm going to be honest with you, bro, I went on holiday. You went on holiday? <laughs> yeah. So it was a good withdrawal yeah. then. It was a, it was a decent size. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we can't get into the amounts due to um, compliance. Yeah, and stuff, of course, but, of course. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it was very nice. Cool. Well, look, um, let's dive into your trading in the here and now. I mean, what, what, how many symbols are you or markets are you analysing to to get into? I suppose break it down to forex and then cryptos. So, so primarily, I'll start off with um, the US dollar. So, I analyse the dollar index. Um, from the dollar index, I'll go look at Euro USD, um, GBP USD. Um, it depends if there's a setup on there. I don't really like to put myself in a box if I'm a swing trader or a scalper. I don't really like to put myself in a box because I believe you can trade the weekly the same as the one second. You know, I've, t- I've taken trades from one second time frame literally to the monthly time frame. Um, so on a day-to-day basis, I'll start off with those two currencies. If there's any um, opportunities there, then obviously I'll capitalize. If not, um, then I'll start to look at some of the other exotics or the other Forex currency pairs um, because I'm very clear on my rules and a lot of a lot of times when I'm waiting for a setup, I have to have a very strict confirmations to happen. Um, and these setups may not happen every single day. Um, and whilst I'm doing that, I'm also managing my crypto portfolio as well. So do you, you trade Forex and then you just, uh, I suppose, do you hold on hold crypto? and, and... Yeah, So I, I hold crypto for the long term and yep. I do something called exchange trading as well. So exchange trading is where it's the same, the same sort of sim, like same sort of um, process in terms of Forex where you're analyzing the exact same technicals. It's just instead of doing leverage trading, it's non-leverage. So I'm using the actual percent, the chart moves. So let's say, for example, you know, crypto goes up, you know, 100 percent, 10 percent, whatever it may be. Then what I would do is I'll exchange my crypto into a, something called a stable coin. So a stable coin is another crypto that's just valued at one dollar. And I will use those to accumulate more of my digital assets. So, for example, when the market dips or before it dips, obviously, <laughs> I'm going to obviously um, sell into those ex- stable coins. And then once it dips back lower, I'll be able to get in at a better price point, thus accumulating more of that cryptocurrency. Awesome. Cool. And and what about like, uh, so you talked about but maybe you're not going to trade every day, but I mean, how many trades a week are you typically taking? Honestly, it all depends on the setup, man, on, on the market. But anywhere from some some weeks, I've literally taken zero trades. And some weeks, I've taken 15 trades. It literally all depends on the market. Um, because I, the way like, I have a very, very strict, very, very strict set of rules. And it's just if the rules and the market presents opportunities. I don't really like to impose my will on the market. 
I just let the mar- I only trade when the market makes money available to me. And are you using yeah, anywhere from? Sorry, Tom. Yeah, yeah, zero to fifteen. Are you using market or limit orders? Market execution all the time. So I'll use a lot of alerts. Um, I use a lot of alerts, and once the alert goes off, then I'll wait for another confirmation. So I use a lot of Wyckoff, um, a lot of Wyckoff methodology. And once, for example, I get that accumulation schematic within my point of interest, or yeah, well, once it's in my point of interest, I have to wait for that actually to occur. Once I've set my limit, once it, sorry, my alert, once that triggers, now I'll go ahead and market execute. And you talked about taking trades on various time frames. In what time frames do you analyze? So I always do a top-down approach. So I always start off on the monthly and work my way down from because each time frame has got its own structure. So what I like to do is align each time frame structure together um, to make sure I'm, I'm with the whole momentum of the market. So I'll start off with the monthly, go down to the weekly, daily, four hour, one hour, 15 minute, five minute, one minute. And then so sometimes depending on how clean the setup is and the size of my stop loss. And again, if I'm, if I'm busy as well, depends on my, my day to day, because I don't plan, I plan my life around trade. Sorry, my tra- plan my trading around my life. My life comes first and trading secondary. So um, it's more so again, what if I've got other meetings, if I'm, you know, doing things with friends, um, et cetera. But yeah. And uh, talking about your stop loss, I mean, how do you find a place for your stop loss, given the fact you're sort of getting in where everyone else's stop losses? <laughs> so I look where the loss is. So I'm always using the concept that's going to take out as many traders and rebalance price as much as I can. But we have very, very precise market entries. Um, I'll be able to show you a little bit later. Um, but we have very, very precise entries and we have very small, um, very small risk and a bit, a lot larger rewards. So we basically place our stop loss at an invalidation point, which if that, if it, like we're going to know very quickly if we're wrong very very quickly um i'll be able to show you a bit later it'll be a bit easier to show you yeah cool all right we'll jump on a video and and uh you guys will be able to see that later so uh what about winning percentage you did mention like you know you, you got quite a tight risk and possibly a larger reward how does the winning percentage look on that yeah so i aim for 50 percent um average risk to reward average risk to reward at the moment is around a one to 14 and right. um yeah that's huge. That's huge compared to my, most other guests I have on the show. So um, really interested to see that in the video that we do later. Now, you said life but comes before trading. Uh, how does your, what does your typical trading day look like? Or is even does, it, does that even exist? And if not, how do you manage it? Okay, so first thing I'll do before I even, before I even get on the markets is I'm going to make sure my mind's right. Because again, the biggest thing I have about trading is that I don't trade the market. I trade my belief about the market. So... What I'm going to do is firstly make sure I'm in abundant mentality, my thoughts are aligned. And once I'm feeling good, once I'm making sure my mind's and I'm, I'm neutral, I'm not projecting any emotions, I'm not in a state of maybe greed or, or let's say if I'm tired or whatever it may be, make sure my internal reality is aligned. And once I've done that, then obviously I'll come. Um, so I do my morning routine. So I like to make sure I've had a nice coffee in the morning. Um, <laughs> I do a lot of intermittent fasting as well to give me me- mental clarity. Um, I feel like if I'm eating a big breakfast in the morning, it's just going to dumb me down to be honest with you but from there and i'll meditate make sure my mind's clear make sure i've spent at least 10 to 15 minutes reading um and now from that point i'm normally in an abundant state i obviously have my alert set um if there's any set set and setups to take obviously i'll execute if not i'll go to the gym and then just get on with the rest of my day start doing my meetings um and then yeah take it from there and, and how long does it take you to get through your analysis um, to be honest, though, anywhere. So again, it, like I'm very clear on what my setup. I've got a very trained eye to what I'm seeing. But what I'll do is I'll start off normally on a Sunday. Um, so I'll sit down on Sunday for about two to three hours. Um, start off with the forex pairs, go for my analysis from there, and then just set my alerts um, from that way. I like to have a lot of higher time frame point of interests. And then what I'll do is I'll scale in to that higher time frame point of interest. So let's say I'll have a, a certain area maybe on the four hour or the hourly time frame. And then from there, obviously, I will zoom in um, once it hits that point of interest and then start to look for my confirmations. And how are you doing your alerts? I'm literally just TradingView. There's a website called TradingView. Um, you can go on there. Um, they have a free um, plan. Um, I'm not affiliated with them or anything, but they have a free plan. You only get one alert, and I just purchased one, which gives you up to 50 alerts, and I'll just set my alert. And then if it comes to fruition, then <laughs> game time. Now, in the beginning, what do you think made you different from the average mum or dad trader out there? I mean, did you have any special traits or actions that you think you might have taken that other people are, are hesitant to take? Mm, mm, mm. So the first thing is no one can outwork me. No one will outwork me. It's putting a lot of time and being rural myself for that time. 
um, in terms of, you know, actually training my eye to my setups because I believe you go through different levels of learning. You know, the first level of learning is where, you know, you have no, you don't know what you don't know, right? You're completely unaware of your setup. It's like, you know, tying your shoes for the first time. First time you've tied them, you have no idea whatsoever. But the more you do it, the more time you spend back testing, the more time you spend journaling your trades, that's a big thing. Um, a lot of self-reflection as well. Like, I, honestly, I would say the biggest thing that separates me from most people is my level of self-awareness. You know, I believe that self-awareness is a superpower, man. And once you've got that level of self-awareness, because what does knowledge mean? Know thyself. And once you know yourself and you know your personality, you know your quirks, you know your strengths, you know your weaknesses, then you can use that to help you with your trading and give you that edge. And so somebody who hasn't probably got the work ethic that you've got, I mean, what would you say, if you had to say try this, what would you? What would be the, the end of that yeah. sentence? <laughs> get a job <laughs> get a job don't bother honest. don't bother yeah because I, I would be very honest with you man like trading's not easy like if it was easy everyone would do it um so i'd say if you if you're not willing to eat dirt for a long time don't do it because if i'm going to be honest with you this journey wasn't rainbows it wasn't you know holidays it wasn't you know nice things it was a lot of honestly a lot of pain a lot of suffering um but i believe pain plus reflection equals progress so it was a lot of taking that pain transmuting it using the i'm finding the seed of equivalent benefit in those problems and again using that to my advantage how through journaling yeah i, li- I like that answer get a job that's brilliant um <laughs> which, which actually it reminds me of what one of my mentors said to me which was hey look you're up against uh, I mean, I'm a, I'm a Chelsea fan. By the way, we won the Champions League today, if you didn't know that. Um, I thought I'd slip that into the show for anyone that's not a Chelsea fan uh, and for those that are. Uh, anyway, he said, imagine you're up, you're basically up against Chelsea every time you go into the markets. And it's like, what, what do you mean by that? He goes, you're up against the best of the best. You're up against guys that are training like every day of the week. They're, they're playing against the best. They're dealing with, they're talking to the best. They're with the best off the field and everything. So, that is what you're going up against. You need to be in that space. If you're not, then you're gonna get you're gonna get a hiding, right? You're gonna get absolutely thrashed. So um, that's it's a great answer. Get, get a job. <laughs> Talking about getting a job. If you have got a job and you do want to get into this, what steps would you recommend they take to start growing an account? Yeah. So firstly, um, that's the thing. So a lot of people focus on trading for the money. Now this is gonna sound very counterintuitive, but I believe the way of making money in the market is by not trying to make money in the market. Um, because again, I only trade when the market makes money available to me. So it's firstly, making sure you're, you're prioritizing your learning over the actual profits. Because again, a lot of people can get blinded by the money. You know, there's a lot of money to be made in this market. But then again, there's a lot of money that can be lost in the market. And I feel like a lot of people, they're, they're focused too much on the, on the wins. But I'm not a trader. I'm a risk manager. So once you manage your risk, I believe naturally your profits will come in line. So what I would say to do is to demo trade. Don't worry about your live account. Demo trade, demo trade, demo trade, demo trade until you've got at least, you know, six months consistency on that demo account. Um, And then from there, now obviously you can start to transition to your live account. Demo trading definitely is the biggest key. A lot of people want to make money, but I believe you should prioritize your learning first because naturally once you've got the skill set down, the money is just going to flow naturally. And do you think that the demo account uh, method which some people recommend some people don't um do you think how, how do you think that sort of plays with the the emotional side of you know you're saying you've got to get your mindset right as well how do you think that sort of ties in yeah so obviously we've got two aspects right we've got our, our physical technical analysis our trading skill set then we've got our mindset so once you've got your trading skill set down first through the consistency on your demo account now you can start working on your mindset because I remember when I, when I went straight to a live account, I didn't know what was the problem. Was it my technicals? Was it my mindset? I, I didn't know the problem. And then once I got my technicals down, once I got that consistency on the demo, it was like, okay, perfect. Now I can go on my live account and I can start learning um, my mindset. I can start learning how to deal with my emotions and, and process my emotions. So focusing on the demo first so that you can make sure your skills intact and then go on to your live account so you can focus on your mindset. But nice. to be honest, once you've got your skills down, I think the mindset just kind of flows naturally, to be honest. Yeah, yeah, nice, nice, nice. Now, I want to jump into a price chart here, not with you literally, but um, I want you to think about three things that you recommended a novice trader educate themselves on. We're reading a chart, and then I, after that, I want you to give us three tips 
a newbie into crypt- the crypto world should know as well. So we'll go with the pro- uh, price chart to start off with. So the first thing, okay, no, firstly, know exactly what you're looking for. Know what your setup is. You, if you, you should know your ideal setup. You, know, you should be able to close your eyes and, and visualize your setup. You should know exactly what a winning trade looks like. If you don't, <laughs> you should be traded. <laughs> um, so firstly, know exactly what your setup is. Um, secondly, again, make sure your mind's right. Make sure you're in that abundant state. So again, I'm going to come back to that saying, you don't trade your market, you trade the belief system about the market. So uh, make sure your mind's right, making sure you're in an abundant mentality, you're not projecting your emotions, you're not trying to force the setup, because what we've got to realize is, again, a lot of these trading platforms, a lot of the, even the market, right, it's designed to what, to make you want to trade. And they want you to trade as much as you can. They want you to trade large, and they want you to trade often. So it's realizing pretty much that this industry is set up against you, um, and from there, having that overstanding that and having that abundant mentality knowing exactly what you're looking for um and the first so the first thing know what you're looking for second thing make sure your mind's right and the third thing is ignore every single person apart from you um a lot of people you know they don't because like one big mistake i did i was jumping from strategy i was comparing myself from other people but make sure that you're focused on yourself you're staying in your own lane and you're not worrying about oh how well, this guy's trading what this guy how much pips this guy's making none and i don't worry about that focus on yourself your setup and your mindset. And what about crypto? So have you got any sort of tips or hints that newbies could who jump into crypto and they want to do what you're doing, which is the the sort of what is it what do you call it? Like the exchange, exchange trading, yeah. trading year. Yeah. So um the, the the biggest tip I would say is again make sure your technicals are on point, man. Demo like there's no no harm in demo trading before you go live. Um probably the easiest thing I could say, again, not a financial advisor, is to hodl first. Um, just make sure you've done that, but understand the actual bull market and cycle. Understand the projects you're getting involved with as well. You know, a lot of people, like you know, we see on social media, right? There's a new crypto guru every single day now. Uh, so it's making sure that you're getting your information from the right person and you're doing your research into these projects before you're putting your money into them. You know, a lot of these coins, unfortunately, they're called uh, poo coins, right? And a lot of people are just promoting them on social media. Um, but you got to remember, right? You, yes, you're buying into it. But who's selling into it? Who's selling into you? And a lot of them are pump and dumps. So stay very, very away from them. A lot of these poo coins are just big pump and dumps. So make sure you know your, your coins you're getting into are not centralized. Again, a lot of these coins are very centralized, right? They've got maybe like 50% of their total supply in one wallet. So make sure that the coins you're, you're actually um, investing in, make sure you've read the white paper, make sure you really understand the use case of that, of that project. Why was that coin invented? What problem does that coin solve? And why would someone put money into that over something else? Cool. Now, thinking about a trader's mindset, do you have any special techniques you can share with us? Yeah, yeah, I do. So the first thing is meditation. First thing is meditation. Um, making sure that you've done it. Now, again, how much meditation? It honestly depends on each person. Um, I do have some self-reflection questions I always like to ask myself, um, and I'm happy to share them if you want me to. Yeah, definitely. That'll be great. So the first one is, am I in a good headspace, right? Am I in a good headspace? The second one is going to be, am I feeling tired? The third one is going to be, am I trading for the sake of trading? The fourth one is, am I following my plan? The fifth one is, have I prepared for this trade? And the final one is, am I preserving capital or am I just jumping in the market? Brilliant. That's superb. Actually, guys, if you haven't, please go back and <laughs> rewind that, write them down. I'll actually make sure that these, well, I'll try and make sure that these are in the show notes so that you can just copy and paste. Um, now, before we get into the quick fire round here, if there was one thing you'd recommend a retail trader spend the next month mastering, what would it be? The first thing, emotional intelligence. Emotional intelligence, everything. Emotional intelligence. Learning to process your emotions and not suppress your emotions. Again, Medi taught me this. Um, so really learning how to... Realizing that it's okay to have emotions. You know, we're humans and we're going to experience emotions. And when these emotions come up, don't suppress it. You know, because if you're suppressing your emotions, think of it like a, um, a bottle of champagne, right? If you're shaking a bottle of champagne, you're shaking it, shaking it, shaking it, it's going to pop. But... You don't want to shake, keep. No, you don't want to suppress your emotions. You want to allow them to come up and release them naturally. Um, and that's why I have I do a lot of um, activities outside of trading to help me deal with them, such as meditation, such as going to the gym. So realizing that you're the bit like you don't. Okay, the key to solving your problems in trading is not solving one problem. It's solving all of your problems. Becoming a better person, becoming a better human, 
And naturally, once we become a better person, once we start to elevate in those aspects, I believe the trading is just a byproduct of that. You know, once you develop your mindset, you know, your income will never exceed your level of personal development. So once we can start to develop our mind, once we can start to grow ourselves as a person, um, then again, those trading results will naturally follow. So again, focus on yourself, grow you, and become the person who would be worthy of having that X figure trading account that you desire. Instead of trying to get the trading account, focus on being the person who's worthy of having that account, who can manage that account, who can have the discipline, who can have the patience. And once you've got those characteristics, again, the results will just follow naturally. Awesome. Now, how long did it take you to go from UB to consistently profitable? Ooh, I'd say a good year, a good year. Man, the first year was rough. It was very, very, very rough. Like that first year was, again, jumping from strategy to strategy. Um, and I believe that first year was was the make or break, man. So the first year was really tough jumping from strategy to strategy. Um, after about seven months in that first year, I found one strategy that I was like, okay, I'm sticking with this. Um, I'm going to actually stick with this. And then from there, it was just that growth of um, refining it. What's your favorite entry setup? Ooh. <laughs> so um, again, scaling down to lower time frames, getting... I have to show you. I can't, I can't explain it. To okay, me. cool. We'll leave that for the video. Um, what about strategies to exit or manage trades? Ooh, very good. Very good. Very good question. So I use something called a devil's advocate position. So let's say, for example, I find my rules to enter a buy position in the market. What I would do is once I'm in the trade, once you know I've, um, it's, it's actually starting to move in my direction, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to flip the chart. I'm going to invert the chart. So on, on TradingView, you can do something called invert the chart. Mm. Um, and the reason why I invert the chart is to remove any biases. And then what I'm going to do now is I'm going to look for any other area. So let's say I've got a demand zone I'm buying. I'm going to find all the supply zones. Where will price react from that zone? Um, set an alert at that devil's advocate area. Once it comes to my zone, I'm going to monitor it. Monitor it. If I get that quote-unquote entry requirements to, to enter a trade, obviously I'm in the trade already. I'll then exit it if that makes sense. That's probably one of the best answers for that question, if not the best answer I've heard in over 125 interviews at this current point in time. So well done on that. Um, I'm actually probably going to use that myself. Now, what's your recommended trading book or resource? Ooh. Honestly, I'd say I am Academy straight up, man. Like in this industry, some people don't like it, but I am Academy is the biggest online platform I've found. Um, there's so many different like there's over 150 educators that go live every single day to teach you, to mentor you, to guide you, to not only give you setups, but to show you the setups to take so, so your eye can be trained. But that's where I've learned everything, man, from IM Academy. And I'm so grateful for them. What's your preferred broker and trading platform? Um, brokers, I actually can't get into brokers due to the compliance side of things, unfortunately. Hey, you ever wonder what broker I use? Well, I use Hanko Trade. It was a no-brainer because I was looking for a broker with good trading conditions and no restrictions on trading my strategies. But one of the main reasons was their raw ECN spread, which could challenge any other broker you're trading with. Learn more at hankotrade.com or click the link in the description. Okay, what about trading platform? Um, yeah, TradingView, 100%. TradingView is where I do all my analysis um, for the actual uh, technical side. And then execution is on an app called MetaTrader 4. Uh, do you want to walk, walk us through your worst ever trade? <laughs> oh, no, I can feel the emotions going. <laughs> so, okay, so this is, again, when I first started trading. Um, when I first started trading, literally, so jumped in the market the first day. I was excited. I was just so excited to make money. I thought, wow, I found my ticket out of poverty. Oh, my God, I'm going to be rich. I'm going to be a millionaire. Opened a trading account. Honestly, didn't even know what spread was, didn't know what stop loss was, didn't know what pips was. Nothing, right? Nothing. Opened an account, pressed buy, made 50% straight away. I was excited, so excited. I was like, I didn't know how I did it. Um, and obviously, I didn't know how I did it, so I couldn't re replicate it. <laughs> and then from there, placed another trade out of confidence and just, I don't know what it was. And then it was literally gone in the next five minutes. The whole account was at zero in the next five minutes. And how did you feel after that? <laughs> oh, bro. Oh, mate. I just, honestly, I just sat there and I just stared into oblivion for about three hours. <laughs> 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 oh, All right. Um, last question of the show. Now, uh, if you could leave our listeners with one piece of advice, what would it be? Ooh, okay. So the biggest piece of advice I would say, man, is find someone who has exactly what you want and do exactly what they do. Get your ego, throw it out the door and increase that teachability index. Now, what's the teachability index? 
the teachability index is having your willingness to learn and the willingness to change. You see a lot of people, they come into this industry with a 10 out of 10 willingness to learn, right? You know, they're willing to learn the information. They're willing to watch the videos, which is amazing, fantastic. But if you've got a 10 out of 10 willingness to learn and you've got a 0 out of 10 willingness to change and you're not willing to change certain things about yourself, you're not willing to sacrifice, you're not willing to give up to go up, you're not willing to get rid of negative habits, you know, you're not willing to do these different things and change certain things because change can be scary for new people, let's be real. But if you're not willing to change those parts of yourself, a 10 out of 10 willingness to learn and a 0 out of 10 willingness to change, well, 10 times 0 is <laughs> still 0. So making sure that you're coachable, man, you have that high teachability index, you're always staying a student. You know, I'm being real, every single day, I still, I still learn every day. I'm still learning, I'm still asking my mentors questions, I'm still seeking new information, well not new information, but ways to refine my strategy even more, I'm always looking to get better, never getting complacent, I'm always looking to improve, so the biggest thing I would say is have that teachability index. Awesome, look, before we wrap, wrap up, what's the best way for the traders to get hold of you? Um, best way would either be on my Instagram, so instagram.com forward slash IK Davis, or I've actually started my YouTube channel recently, which is Master of Coin. Brilliant. Well, look, uh, a big thank you to Karen for sharing with us today. Everything we discussed here, along with all those links, are in the show notes. To find them, simply search for Karen in the search box on tradingnut.com. Until next time, wish all my listeners trading happiness and success. All right, folks, so there you have it. Interview with Karen done and dusted now. I know you would have got massive value out of that interview. It was fantastic. If you do want to take that to the next level, then check out the video we shot after this. In fact, I think I've got a couple of videos to drop. One of them is going to drop now. One's going to drop later. Uh, go and check that out over there on the Trading Nut uh, website or on the YouTube channel. Whilst you're there, check out the stat scalper versus scalper. Um, bit of a mare with the technical setup we had. Um, poor old Dovey got a bit shafted there. But anyway, it is what it is. Go and check that out if you want to see me trade and scalp on the markets, the live markets as well. Uh, also, you're going to get to see uh, the Crypto Nut series is over there as well, guys. So do go and check that out. Really worthwhile watching, uh, especially if you're in crypto. And even if you're not, there's going to be stuff that you can learn in there that you can even apply to your Forex trading, your other trading or whatever it is. Um, whilst you're over there on the tradingnut.com site, do remember Robot Builders Club doors closing soon. If you want to come on board, now's the time. All right, guys, see you in the next one. Have a great trading week.